Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the official weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, chronic daily migraine survivor, and founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation. I'm here each week with awesome tips for your migraines with Dr. Vincent Martin, MD. He is the director of the Headache and Facial Pain Clinic at the University of Cincinnati, and he is also the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hi, Dr. Martin. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Very happy to be here. So we're here every week with something new, but this week we are going to talk about gluten and its relation to migraines. Uh, everyone is talking about gluten. It is the latest fad. It's, it's, everyone wants to know if decreasing it's going to prove various things about their health, including their migraines. Um, and I can say that originally I was skeptical because I have a master's degree in nutrition and I got it back when, I, uh, when there was really traditional sort of view that you only had celiac disease if you were diagnosed as a child and the only symptoms were gut symptoms. So let's talk about migraine and gluten. So what is celiac disease? Celiac disease is where when you ingest a wheat uh, containing gluten, so gluten's a, a wheat protein, right. it basically creates inflammation in your bowels or in your brain and can promote a variety of different disorders. The most common is you get uh, what we call GI symptoms. So you get bloating, you can get diarrhea uh, with it, um, and then you, there's also neurologic symptoms you can get as well. Okay. You get migraine headaches, you can get off balance, you like might fall to one side or the other, or there are some instances where it can damage the peripheral nerves, the nerves that go to your hands or to your, or to your legs. Okay. Um, so some people have actual celiac disease, but I've heard that, you know, some people say that they're gluten sensitive. So let's talk about what gluten, gluten sensitivity is. Excuse me. Well, probably to talk about that first, we need to probably talk about the diagnostic tests. Mm -hmm. So to diagnose celiac disease, you need to do a blood test. And the most common blood test is called tissue transglutaminase, TTG. And there's two types. There's one called an IgA and there's one called an IgG. The IgG, IgA is that's an antibody that that's very specific for the gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea and bloating. Mm -hmm. And the IgG is more specific for the neurologic disease that patients can have. So that's one diagnostic test. And that's going to be positive most of the time in people that have celiac disease. Right. In addition to that, you can do something called a small bowel biopsy where a gastroenterologist, a GI doctor, will pa pass a, a scope down into your stomach and small intestine, take a very small piece of the small intestine via the scope, right. and then you can look at it under the microscope and tell if you have celiac disease. So that's, that, those are required to make a diagnosis of celiac disease. Now, some patients will have the symptoms of celiac disease, right. but those tests are, are negative. Mm -hmm. And then in that instance, the only way you can really know if you're truly sensitive to gluten would be to go on a gluten-free diet. Right. Okay. So that's the difference between actual celiac disease that's confirmed with a diagnostic test and gluten sensitivity. Um, so is there a link, do you think, between migraines and gluten sensitivity and celiac disease? Well, there most definitely is. They've done studies in, in migraine patients, and they found that cel celiac disease is four times more common in patients with migraine than in, than in the general population. That's really so common. It's, about, yeah. it's very common. So it's yeah. about 4% of the entire population, population of migraine patients, whereas in the general population, it's about 0.8% or maybe or one in 100 would be the other way to say it. Mm -hmm. Now, there also are subgroups of people or, or, or groups of people with migraine that have um, – um, a higher likelihood of having celiac disease as well. And those would be auto patients with autoimmune diseases. They could be type 1 diabetes in particular. Type 1 diabetes is juvenile diabetes. If you have juvenile diabetes, there's about a 1 in 4 chance that you could have celiac disease. Okay. Um, if you have uh, something called irritable bowel syndrome, it, they could also have a higher likelihood as well. So if you have any of those disorders, then you may want to consider getting tested for celiac disease if you have migraine. Right. Okay. Um, and how about, you know, the average person that has migraines, how often do you see people who their migraines actually improve if they remove gluten from their diet? Well, I think it depends. If you have uh, known celiac disease, there have been studies that have been done that suggest that about 75% of people will have a complete 
freedom from migraine mm -hmm. if they um, follow a gluten-free diet. So I won't tell you those are great studies. It's mostly just what we call case series. It's like a series of like 15 or 20 people or 50 people that have tried, that have known celiac disease that have tried a gluten-free diet. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you my, my own practice, I've had um, many people who, re who report a very significant improvement in their headaches with a gluten-free diet. Okay. All right. Well, I definitely have met a few people that say they improved greatly uh, after they removed gluten from their diet. Now, I can't say I improved greatly, but I removed it, and I do think I feel a little better. But I've met people that had some pretty drastic um, improvement in their migraines after removing gluten. So it's an awesome thing to talk about. Everyone wants to know about it. And is there anything else you want to add? The only other thing I would say is that, th that there are some studies suggesting a very slight risk to gluten-free diets. It's mm -hmm. not a huge risk, but the risk of, of, of adult onset diabetes is increased in people on a gluten-free diet. And there was one study that suggested that the risk of heart attack and stroke might be slightly increased in patients with a gluten-free diet. Right. So it's something you probably should consult your doctor with before you uh, try the gluten-free diet. And I would also say it's very difficult to maintain a gluten-free diet. Mm -hmm. And it may be important to consult a dietitian um, to make sure that you aren't, you know, hitting some foods that might have some hidden gluten gluten within them. Right, right. So everyone should consult uh, their physician and/or a dietitian before uh, trying a gluten elimination diet. But we've learned some some great things about the relationship between gluten and migraines. So uh, this is Dr. Weitzel and Dr. Martin signing off uh, this week of Heads Up. And we will see you next week. And here's hoping that everyone can find at least one thing to do today that will make them better tomorrow than they are today. Have a good night.